I am looking forward to the main event today. And I'm going to keep this, uh, this brief because I want her to have all the time allotted uh, for both of them to speak and share their screen and give us knowledge. Um, and I, I can't be as poetic as Dr. Thomas. I just, I don't, like, the guy is really good at what he does. Um, so I have today um, the regional director, West, at the Wounded Warrior Project and certified supply chain professional. U.S. Army veteran, ain't going to hold that against you, um, uh, Rhonda Easter. Rhonda, please, the floor is yours, my friend. Hello, everyone. Wow, what a great introduction. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rhonda Easter. Um, as Rodney said, I am the regional director for the alumni program for Wounded Warrior Project. And I'm going to give you a, a bit of a presentation with Kim that talks about Wounded Warrior Project from a 30, 20, and a 10,000 uh, foot view. Um, so some quick information about me, as Rodney uh, alluded, I am a 30 year army veteran. Um, I always tell people whenever I say that I have 30 years of military experience and they look at me and they're like, you can't, if you look at my hair closely, all the gray is there, especially for the last 10 years of uh, military service. A little bit about me, um, mom of five. Uh, we have a blended family, uh, awesome, awesome kids that are doing well. But unfortunately we are all geographically spread uh, across the US. Um, my passion is with being able to help veterans. Um, I realized when I transitioned out of the army that I was, I was done with the deployment part of being a service member, but I wasn't done with my commitment to give back. Um, I wanted to make sure that there were veterans that were out there that knew that those of us that have transitioned are still going to continue to tell their stories. We're still gonna to continue to do what we can to help and serve families. But more importantly, um, we were going to do whatever we needed to do to make sure that families were also connected in that space as well. Um, it has been quite the honor and privilege to be able to, to serve our, our veteran community. So let me tell you a little bit about Wounded Warrior Project. So um, as an organization, I think most people are very familiar with, with who we are, but I don't think they're very familiar with the programs that we offer. So I'm gonna start at that uh, $30,000, uh, 30,000 foot view and talk a little bit about the alumni program. So the alumni program is the gateway to the other 12 programs that are within Wounded Warrior Project. And our purpose across the organization is to connect, empower, and serve families, the warrior, and caregivers, and keep them connected within the community. Uh, most people don't realize that as an organization, we try to maintain relationships with the Chamber of Commerce, try to maintain relationships with the Rotary. And I love that Sherry is on this call because I would love to be able to talk to her afterwards. But we also work with other nonprofit and for-profit companies that are in the space to help empower warriors to lead, uh, to lead lives that are engaging and purposeful post wounds or injury. Now, unlike a lot of our partner DSOs, there is one thing to always remember about Wounded Warrior Project. We only service post 9-11 veterans. So for those that are fall into that GWAT or that global war on terrorism category, we offer services for them. And the reason is you'll see that within the VSO space that sometimes some veteran service organizations tailor to a specific category of veterans. And that's because you have the, the ability to provide those resources. And as we age in our, in our veteran population, the care requirements may be different. So Wounded Warrior can be found in all 50 states, Germany, and two US territories. I have one in the West, which is Guam, and in the East is Puerto Rico. Now we don't necessarily have regional offices in those 50 states, but we do have the ability to provide outreach and services in all 50 states, Germany, and our two US territories. So as I said earlier, alumni is really the gateway program. We provide collaboration again with local organizations, 
and community partners to assist alumni and families by through their integration in the community. And where that is key is when the veteran transitions or when the veteran has moved to a new community. It's really important to try to get them connected with community partners, one, to learn about their community, two, to get them, to get them, you know, they, they, you want them to be woven into the fabric of the communities that they now live in. And more importantly, it's a great opportunity for veterans of all ages to be able to interact within that space. So going into the next slide, what we, what I spoke about this earlier, how there, there are actually 13 programs across the whole of Wounded Warrior Pro, uh, Project. So the alumni program, as I stated, was the gateway. Our independence program specifically works with veterans that have uh, suffered amputees, uh, excuse me, that are amputees, have suffered um, very, very traumatic injuries and wounds to help them live lives independent of their caregiver. Our Warrior Care Network team, uh, you'll hear us say WWP, we never say WWP, but our WWP talk team, combat stress recovery uh, program. Those are the three arms of our mental health program. And what we help do is help veterans with that transition back into the community. Um, a lot of veterans don't realize when they're in boots that when you transition, it's a different way of talking, it's a different way of engaging, and it's a different way of interacting with your own family now that you're not in the military. It is so great for me now as a, a recently transitioned veteran to not speak in terms of acronyms, um, to actually have conversations with people that are meaningful beyond the last deployment or beyond the last duty station. We can talk about things like what's going on in your community, ways that we can all volunteer and contribute to giving back. We also have a physical health and wellness program with uh, our physical health and wellness program. We help veterans uh, get back into a sense of wellness, whether it's a get fit, a healthier eating, a healthier living it through a well-rounded lifestyle. Um, under the physical health and wellness program, you'll also find adaptive sports and adaptive sports and collegiate sports. So our adaptive sports program again caters to the warriors that may have physical injuries or physical limitations that keep them from participating in the traditional events. So we have adaptive sports programs such as our wheelchair basketball. Um, in uh, the East, you'll find adaptive sports programs that include uh, swimming, uh, crew. Um, here in Colorado Springs, we actually now have launched an adaptive sports program tailored to hiking uh, for those that have suffered uh, injuries that are resulting in blindness or physical impairment. We have guides that actually tailor those programs so the warriors can participate. Our Soldier Ride program is probably the one program that most people are most familiar with. That's the biking program. Um, Soldier Ride also has two, two different branches of the Soldier Ride program. There's an adaptive sports uh, arm of the Soldier Ride program and the traditional bike rides that you normally hear throughout the year that are normally tied to our Carry Forward program. We also offer financial wellness and assistance to veterans to help with financial planning through a partnership with Prudential. Um, our government and community affairs, uh, specifically here in Colorado, works with a lot of our uh, legislative uh, leaders and their specific offices to help further the uh, causes of veterans, initiative, uh, veterans initiatives, such as the transformation of the VA, uh, women's veterans initiatives that related to military sexual trauma and also in related into healthcare. Um, and then finally, we have the great program that Kim is going to talk about, which is a great way to partner within the community, which is our Warriors to Work. Um, the Warriors to Work program offers uh, skill, spill, skills building, resume writing, and a whole uh, set of tools to help warriors 
transition those skills that they had in the military to things that you'll find within your community. So as you can see from the slide, our most common request for assistance is usually the financial and the benefits piece. Uh, we actually have a benefits team that helps with VA claims, uh, filing claims for GI Bill and Voc Rehab, um, uh, getting the spouse or the family member that is in the household with the veteran into the VA caregiver program. Um, our financial management piece over the course of COVID, Wounded Warrior uh, gave away $11 million. Um, to veterans that were in need that demonstrated uh, needs uh, that were related to COVID furloughs or layoffs. And as we transition into the next slide, what I really want you to know about uh, Wounded Warrior Project is that in our COVID response, we were able to still adapt our face-to-face -face programming, but in a virtual environment, much like the way you do your rotary meetings. Uh, we've been able to tailor programs that related to skills building, um, getting warriors back to work. Um, we've done collaborative efforts with other partner uh, programs such as uh, BSOs within Colorado Springs. We work very, very closely with Mount Carmel and uh, the VFW in, in this area. And we launched several initiatives over COVID um, that are out for discussion with our legislative branches at both state and federal with the Women's Veterans Initiative, again, uh, focusing on care and, um, and uh, military sexual trauma and our caregiver initiative. Um, the caregiver initiative, just to give you a, a wave top view, uh, we realized that there was a focus on the veteran, but there wasn't a focus on providing some form of respite for our caregivers. So we've tried to use those initiatives to actually further causes for veterans throughout the, the COVID space. Um, everything that we do in Wounded Warrior Project is all off of the great, great support that we have from our donors and corporate sponsorships. We receive no government grants and every service that we offer to veterans is free of charge. So I thank you, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the introduction to Wounded Warrior Pro Program, excuse me, the Wounded Warrior Project, but I would like to turn it over to Kim, who can give you a bit of a deep dive into what Warriors to Work does within our community. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay, let me get these slides turned over. All right, there's my uh, curly hair picture, but you all get the, the lower humidity Colorado high, you know, higher elevation version here. So, <laughs> um, so my name is Kim Desjardins, or if you can't say the French version, it's it's Desjardins. Okay, I'll take I'll take either ones. Um, I'm a Warriors to Work manager. Uh, I've been on the bus, as we call it internally. I've been on the on the Wounded Warrior Project team for a little over a year. Um, and it has been quite a ride, let me tell you, but um, excited making an impact here. I came to Colorado Springs from um, the Northern San Diego area. I used to work at Camp Pendleton with the Marine Corps Wounded Warrior Battalion. So that was the active duty component or the military component that the Marine Corps has. Um, I got deep roots in um, Marine Corps, Navy, so coming here to Army and Air Force territory, I've learned how to take it on the chin really well. So <laughs> with the with the little bit of inter-service rivalry that goes on, but really quick about me, my background, unlike um, Rhonda, I was a military spouse for 10 years. Um, so I was married to an active duty Marine. Thank you, Rodney. Um, during probably the gnarliest time to have been a spouse, I was married three, three four months before the Twin Towers went down and uh, was on my honeymoon, actually. Um, came back to the room to, to see the news and devastated by that. So to say the first 10 years of my uh, connection to the military community and the first 10 years of my career uh, and what was going around me, what was going around in my community, deeply impacted by what was happening internationally. Um, when we talk about war and the consequences of war, and that's what Wounded Warrior Project is. So um, I really found a niche um, in my career through the years, connect, translating culture between the military and the civilian world, um, building bridges, 
So I'm a translator, I'm a bridge builder. Um, and specifically with Warriors to Work, as we talk about companies and how to hire veterans, how to find them, how to keep them, uh, how to keep that talent. Um, as that spouse, I got my own personal experience with frequent moves, a lot of job changes, uh, chronic underemployment. And I was that go-getter trying to figure it out. And in the midst of my community is my, my community of fellow uh, military spouses restrained and families trying to figure it out. So in that effort to figure it out and to do something in that spirit of service, um, I totally jumped in as, as volunteerism. Uh, with those frequent moves, I was disappointed with the career track, or I guess you could, I don't know if I could call it a track that I was on initially, but it was my volunteerism that really translated to the best kind of service that I found through opportunities in federal service and in other nonprofits. Uh, I did get my feet wet in the private sector, but it was that volunteerism that really like pulled me in into making community impact. Um, everything from, I led a military family support, family readiness, for any of you may be familiar with that language, um, supporting families of infantry Marines during some very scary and very dangerous deployments, uh, Gold Star family involvement, wounded warriors coming back from the battlefield, all that type of support, to transitioning to career development. And so that's where we are here with uh, wounded warriors. Uh, in transitioning their careers, because I've done it a few times myself. And actually, the whole team of Warriors to, Warriors to Work has done it. Um, but really, that brings us to today. Um, I'm here because, well, getting involved in the community to build relationships with companies who want to find and keep their veteran talent. And to say, if there's any over-encompassing statement I want to say is that my satisfaction comes from digging into the grittiness of resiliency, of that I won't give up, of that I will figure it out, I will contribute, I have so much to give, um, and then celebrating that triumph of human spirit because a lot of our folks have overcome some pretty serious obstacles. So to move on specifically, what Warriors to Work does is providing career counseling, you know, how to do the modern day job search, which is complex and confusing, especially in a post-COVID market. Um, our team, we've got about 35 specialists and a small leadership team, six managers, two regional directors, and one national director, figuring out how to help warriors get jobs, reducing the time that they're unemployed, um, getting them out of an underemployed situation because they don't know how to do the modern day job search, um, which if any of you has been in any time soon, it ain't, it ain't pretty and it ain't easy. Um, teaching them how to, it is very much a teach them how to fish type of program. But I'll say this, we teach them how to fish our job seekers, but we also kind of like to seed the pond. And by that, I mean, reaching out directly to, to employers who want to hire veterans. Um, and we teach them through the career counseling, goal setting, interview prep, resume writing, how to network. Oh, there's my typo. Sorry, guys, that should say networking, not networking. Net, not networking, but you know, I'm talking fast. So it sounds like <laughs> networking anyway. Um, connecting them with training resources. We have a whole slew of community uh, partners across the nonprofit um, field uh, to get folks into training if they wanna rebrand or reclassify their careers. Uh, we do follow up with them after they've gotten the job to see how the new job is going. We have regularly timed intervals to provide some counseling if they find themselves in a difficult uh, employment situation or don't know how to, how do I deal with, I have all this leadership experience, you know, Kim, how do I deal with this? Um, I'm, I'm 20 years older than my boss and I, and I got all this leadership experience, but how do I tell them they're messing it up? So, so we get our hands dirty with telling them how to handle that as well as getting the, um, the employer feedback too. When we present a candidate to a recruiter, they look at the resume, maybe they conduct an interview, uh, we try to get some feedback. And I'm gonna talk about that here in just a second. And all right, what, do we, what does Warriors to Work provide for employers? All of our teammates come from recruiting backgrounds so we can talk the language of, of employers. Um, we can take the feedback that they, they can provide for us and translate it into a coaching deliverable you know, that's suitable for the job seeker to hear. So if I can, if a recruiter tells me, you know, they really didn't do a very good job in the interview, they kind of bombed a couple of these questions. We can take that piece, turn it into, hey man, this is what a veteran, a family support member, a caregiver, 
you know, here, here's, we got some feedback. And so this is how you can apply that to do better in the next interview. Um, helping with onboarding processes by staying in touch with the candidate, uh, maintaining our relationships with the employers. Uh, we're making sure that they're applying for jobs that are actually qualified for, um, trying to reducing the stigma around combat related injuries. And I'm trying not to read off the slide, but really what does that mean? It means that Warriors to Work gets a whole range of talent from your special operators coming right off active duty um, or a couple of years active duty, phenomenal talent to those that are frankly tough to place because their, their employability is low. And so then we have to get creative and really reach out to, um, to our resource partners who are more accustomed to working with um, what they can do. But we work really hard to try to figure out what can you do? If you can't do full-time, is there part-time? If you can't do part-time, is there volunteer? You know, how do we build this resume? How can we build your experience to get to you to that final goal where they wanna be? And we're a program for life. So we get veterans um, and their family members who come back to us multiple times. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't tell them no, unless they're not contributing to their own job search. So that's a little bit of that tough love coaching that we sometimes have to deliver uh, is either when goals are unrealistic or they're not following through on, on the commitment, the promises um, that will lead them to that goal. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this slide, but this is just some, some, some I guess, impressive numbers. Um, we measure our economic impact by the total sum of salaries in the prior year. So this is what we had out of FY20. Uh, we're really working hard on that sustained employment, trying to find the best fit for, our, for those who come to us for support so they stay in the job, um, or at least then that they're learning um, if, if they do move on to a job. Oh, I kind of... I had this role, I understand that kind of work, but now I really, that's gonna help me take the next move into the, the job that's gonna be the better fit. Um, so those are my numbers, but really it's this, what we've done through COVID, we've increased our virtual events and what's kind of unique with Warriors to Work that's different with some of the other programs at Wounded Warrior Project is we're already virtually based. We carry on Zoom conferences, calls, phone calls, email, text, phone calls, with, um, with our customers, with our job seekers. We're in touch with them every week, um, understanding how their progress is going. We're accountability partners and we're coaches. Um, and probably the newer things that we're kind of excited about, I'm involved now with, um, we're drafting a new mentor program. So those who have been in jobs and in a stable place can now help, help carry. Our logo is the soldier carrying the other on their back. So uh, as Rhonda said, you know, it's alumni and a lot of the fun stuff that attracts our veterans um, and their families to our programs. Warriors to Work is not a fun <laughs> program. <laughs> we're the we're the we're going to get you to work program. So if we can get you in the door by having some fun, and then we peel back those layers and get to some vulnerable spots where, you know, financially things aren't as solid as they need to be, or I hate my job because I'm not challenged in it anymore, or I don't know how to get a new job. We can, we can pluck them from alumni, from our fun stuff into, into the programs where they belong um, to get them over to that next obstacle. But we've got um, the mentor program that we're just pilots just starting, barely starting. Um, an entrepreneur, we've got some partnerships. We, we are not in how to start a small business program. We specialize in employment. So that's when we reach across the table to other um, other VSOs or other organizations in the community or nationally who do deliver that type of expertise. And we're about ready to do something like that. And I've got drone, drone training pilot program on there because, well, literally they're, we're training drone pilots, but it is a small early pilot program, a uh, little fun with puns. But um, that's out of our Fayetteville office that we're trying out to see um, if the kind of success that they get there. Um, but we're continuing networking with companies, networking um, to reach warriors and their uh, family members who are in need of employment support. And I forgot to start my timer. So I, that probably went over 10 minutes, but um, we'll take questions. <laughs> it was totally fun.